Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Saida Kasi and in this video we are about to talk about cellular adaptations. What are those? You know, what's going on? Cells adapt to environmental changes through modifications in size, number, function or phenotype. These changes can be pathological or physiological. I mean, when it's physiological, it's normal regulated responses, and uh, when it's pathological, it's responses to injury or disease. Main types of adaptations are hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy, metaplasia, and dysplasia. In this slide, uh, we are talking about hypertrophy. Uh, hypertrophy is increase in cell size. As you can see, we have three cells and now we have bigger cells. The same number, they are not dividing into more and more and more cells. So, it occurs in tissues with limited regenerative capacity. For example, in permanent cells like cardiac muscles and skeletal muscles. Uh, it's driven by mechanical load and hormonal stimulations. For example, um, when you exercise a lot, it leads to increased protein synthesis. You're going to have bigger uh, muscle cells. Or in cardiac hypertrophy, chronic hemodynamic overload cause left ventricular hypertrophy. Or for example, in pregnant uterus, we have hormonal stimulation, which leads to both hyperplasia and hypertrophy. We're going to talk about hyperplasia in this slide. Okay, hyperplasia is increase in number of cells. As you can see, we have normal cells, three, and here we have same size, but more cells. What does it mean that we have more cells? It means that they are dividing. So it must be in tissues that are capable of cell division. Uh, we have labile and stable cells. It's driven by growth factors and hormones. You know, it can be, uh, again, physiological hyperplasia, such as hormonal, as we can see, breast tissue in pregnancy, or compensatory liver regeneration, which is a very um, interesting um, process. So talk about pathological hyperplasia. For example, endometrial hyperplasia, what is it? It's thickening of uterus lining due to excess estrogen stimulation. It's abnormal. Uh, or, for example, benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH, which is driven by androgenic stimulation, leading to increased glandular and stromal cell proliferation. Or another example for pathological hyperplasia can be psoriasis, which is an autoimmune disease that causes um, the tenfold increase of epidermal cell proliferation. Atrophy. Atrophy results from decreased protein synthesis and increased degradation. Cells shrink in size, often undergoing autophagy, uh, which is self-digestion. Okay, as you can see here, we have bigger cells and now in atrophy we have a smaller and um, lower number of cells it is not necessarily pathological for example physiological atrophy occurs um, during embryonic development and also there are several causes for pathological atrophy such as reduced workload uh, for example muscle atrophy in immobilization or loss of innervation, or decreased blood supply, ischemia can lead to uh, atrophy, malnutrition can lead to atrophy, aging, example for it can be cortical brain atrophy in dementia, 
or endocrine deficiency. Uh, after menopause, we have endometrial atrophy. Metaplasia is reversible cell type change. What does it mean? It's a reprogramming of stem cells. It leads to a substitution of one mature cell type with another that is more resistant to chronic stress. So metaplasia is not a normal physiological process and can progress to cancer if the stimulus persists. Okay, in adults, metaplasia occurs only within the tissues of epithelial and mesenchymal, mesenchymal origin. So, here's an example. Respiratory epithelium changes in smokers. It can, um, it can increase the risk of infection because uh, we know that normal ciliated columnar epithelium is replaced by stratified squamous epithelium. Or another example can be Barrett's esophagus. Its um, squamous epithelium of esophagus is replaced with columnar epithelium with goblet cells. Okay, now, last but not least, we have dysplasia. Dysplasia represents an abnormal proliferation of cells with loss of uniformity and tissue architecture. The characteristics of dysplasia can be increased mitotic activity. You know, we can see here that our nuclei is bigger and darker. And also we lose the cell polarity. What does it mean? Um, it means the alteration in cell orientation in the tissue. And also we have different shapes and size in the cells in the tissue. And also there might be some giant cells, which is the sign of malignancy. Generally, the dysplasia is considered pre-malignant and can progress to cancer. If I want to bring an example for you for uh, dysplasia, I can say cervical dysplasia, which is related to HPV and can be detected by pap smear. Or another one can be bronchial dysplasia, uh, which is a precursor to squamous cell carcinoma. Okay, in this slide, um, I'm bringing all of them together and we can have a review. So we have hypertrophy, cell size increases. What are the examples? Heart and hypertension. Hyperplasia, cell number increases. Uh, endometrium or liver regeneration. Atrophy, cell size and number drops muscle wasting, metaplasia, cell type changes, bronchial epithelium in the smokers, dysplasia, abnormal growth pattern, cervical dysplasia. Thank you very much.